I'm going to take you behind my entire design process, like my thoughts, my sketches, my swatches, the whole thing. So buckle up. And real quick, before we jump into this, you guys, I do want to kind of let you know that this pattern did not start off the way that it finished. I know you already know what the pattern looks like. Uh, but I am also going to be sharing like the entire process. So you'll get to see what almost became and what didn't become before it got to be what it is. If you're not interested in the part where I was exploring what it was going to become, there are timestamps down below where you can skip to the part where I realized the design that it was going to become and, and started designing it from there. But I thought I would include the entire process, including the ideas that didn't make it in case you were interested in how that worked as well. So here we go. So I had created a swatch for a design submission for a publishing call, and this design did not get accepted. So when I picked these colors, I immediately thought of this swatch that wasn't going to be used for the design submission. So let me grab that. So this is the swatch that I had created. And um, the like I said, the design didn't get picked up, but I really like this stitch pattern that I came up with. It was designed based off a textured knit stitch, but this is all crocheted. The only problem is that this is worsted weight wool and this is fingering weight wool. So I need to figure out a way to transpose the two. So I'm thinking I might swatch up something close to this, but with double crochets instead. Um, and then I might also swatch up just an, another pattern that's floating around in my mind is a couple years ago, I designed a stained glass mandala vest and I really love that piece in the back. And I think I can find a way to create that using the, that type of stitches. And that was fingering weight. So I know it will work and it was double crochet. So using that kind of a technique, but creating a new geometric design. So I wanted to swatch Annie. I want to do a swatch with that as well. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm kind of lining up my swatch over the top of this one because I want the size to be about the same. And I'm looking at how many stitches apart that is going to be on the fingering weight versus the worsted weight. Um, so it looks like this post is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches in, but I really don't like multiples of numbers. Like seven is a horrible number to be a multiple of. So I think I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to eight. So I've got a couple rows in here and I'm noticing gapping, which I forgot. Um, on It's hard to see because this yarn is black, but on the, the front posts, I forgot on this swatch, there's no gapping because you don't actually do a post every row. I forgot that I was working plain rows in between the drop down post rows, um, which is how this post carries over the top of the gray. So I restarted, uh, I added more stitches to go with the stitch count that I came up with, a multiple of eight. And then I actually went down a hook size to a three millimeter because uh, the other one was seemed a little too loose and I'm happier with this gauge. But I'm noticing that I'm not going to want these posts this far apart. So I'm going to start over uh, with six stitches. So post one, two, three, four, five. And they're only going to be this wide. So I was doing them a part eight. I switched to every fifth stitch and started striping in the dream color using kind of the same technique that I used here, but with two colors and larger stitches. Um, I do like the effect. I love, I love the stained glass look, but now I have to decide what I want the body to look like. I originally thought I wanted it all this mostly dream and color pop, like a border, dream and color popping with the stained glass. I can keep it the same and keep the pattern, or I could do stripes where it's dream and color and then black, like a blacker stripe and then more dream and color. So I could like stripes within stripes, or I could also play with these posts. If these posts start moving in and out, they can start to create a design and doing like triangles, it would be really easy to do um, like a, I think like a very angular floral motif. So I don't know yet. I don't know what I wanna do. I think I might just do like two more rows of this to see and then add a black stripe and see and then start playing with the floral. 
So I ended up looking up some photos for inspiration uh, for geometric shapes and I came across a geometric shape where the distance between the posts was farther and then thinner. And so I threw that row in, uh, but I threw it on top of the regular row and I realized I really like this brick type of design. I thought I was gonna continue with the posts in their place where they've been laid out, but I think I'm going to offset them. I just haven't decided if I want them all to be this brick width and offset the bricks. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, instead of having like the shorter and the longer bricks. But before I go any further, I'm actually gonna go search. That's mine, thank you. They can't have that back, thanks. Um, I'm actually gonna go search on Ravelry to see if I can find any cowls that look like this already, because if it's already been done, I don't want to go any further with this idea. So I did find this unicorn baby bricks pattern, and it uses a thicker weight yarn. And then I also found this cowl, which is Tunisian. So I decided to frog my swatch completely and the yarn held up really well and I've started something a little different. So I set off to Google and I found this really cool geometric shape. So I think I'm going to try to do some mosaic crochet with it. I've done one mosaic crochet pattern in the past and that means I can design it, right? <laughs> so I headed over to Stitch Fiddle and I started plugging in colors. I'm using the Fair Isle knitting color work chart inside Stitch Fiddle to do this um, over, where are the colors? Yeah, I was in view only. I went into edit chart. So there's, I just picked blue randomly and started plugging in until I found something uh, that looked a lot like that and that I found the repeat for. So if I Go ahead and scroll out so you can actually see here. There's that kind of star motif and I found a way to repeat it. So I don't know how to make it into a mosaic crochet chart though. So what I did was I went ahead and I printed it off and now I am finding where I want the repeat to start. So I thought this would be a really nice spot um, lengthwise. And then I thought this would be a really nice spot width-wise. So I'm starting to box off the repeat where this pattern starts to repeat itself again. Once I find my repeat, I've actually been watching this really awesome YouTube video, and I'll link it down below, um, from Fiber Fox Studios on how to create your own mosaic crochet charts. So I've got one started. So once I get my... Uh, repeats figured out i'm gonna start actually making the chart and then i'm gonna swatch that up and see if i like that instead so here we go i need to get to bed soon but i was so excited to get this done that i think i've stayed up too late but here is my mosaic crochet chart <clears throat> of course the design i've chosen requires special mosaic this is overlay mosaic crochet special stitches like the ones that I learned when I made this snowflake cowl, which is by Alexis Sixel of Sixel Designs. I bought this pattern and made it. It's a wonderful pattern, wonderful design. That's how I learned overlay mosaic crochet. So I am using the special stitches that I learned in her pattern. In this one, which I didn't have the symbols in Excel, so I used some letters, which is why there's so many symbols on here. And then I'm going to, for ease of following, I'm going to redraw this by hand in my graph paper. But I'll probably do it tonight just because <laughs> it's on my mind and I'm going to have a hard time going to sleep if I don't do it now. So I'm going to do that. I'll share it with you and then I'm going to head to bed for the night. But pretty excited to work this up. I'm pretty sure I figured it out and this should look pretty dang cool. All right, I just tried to start drawing this and the craft paper is too small. The graph paper on my chart is way bigger. So what I'm gonna do instead is draw the symbols I couldn't create by hand and um, hopefully that makes it easy to follow. So I've got it all marked up. This probably looks 
even crazier than before, but it makes sense to me. And that's what matters. So these are the symbols that uh, Sixel Designs uses. I think she calls them diagonal ups and diagonal downs. But what makes more sense in my mind is left leaning and right leaning. So that's why I have L's here and R's here. Uh, the symbols stay in this line, but technically they come down to this one, which is why I put the L down there. But you don't do anything in this line when you get to that symbol, which is why her symbols are only in this line, even though they touch down here, because this is the row that you actually do it in. That's the most confusing thing about designing mosaic crochet is when you're marking your symbols, they're for the row below. And so that, like, it trips you up a little bit, or at least it tripped me up in my mind a little bit as I was going through it. I was looking at my chart for row three, marking what I wanted for row two, and then for row four, for row three. And it's, it's just take it one step at a time and you can do it. The ones that tripped me up the most were the special stitches. Um, and I'm still, I still don't even know if I did them right until I test them out, but this is, this looks clean and I think I followed the rules properly so I think it will work so I couldn't help it I didn't go to bed <laughs> I stayed up and started so because this is overlay mosaic crochet I decided to go ahead and do a swatch in the round because that's what the project's gonna be worked in the round and then I don't have to cut my yarn so I ended up chaining three times the chart repeat 54 stitches and this is what I'm getting um, as far as size and I did two plain rows before starting kind of like I've got charted out here except I did both of the first two rows in black so did two plain rows and then I started following the chart I did find uh, some mistakes there should be no symbols here um, and that should that should be white but um, I think it's showing up the way that it should. I'm just not far enough into it to get to see it, which is a bummer, but I'm so tired. My eyes are going cross-eyed and I risk making mistakes. So I'm gonna have to save this for tomorrow. But I think if this turns out the way I think it's going to, I think this is gonna be the winning design. I finally got the chart to work. I'm so excited. I'm having lunch right now, um, but I wanted to show you guys, I got the chart to work. I got the repeat wordy working and I am just gonna put a little border on it to see kind of what I wanna do for the border. And then I'm gonna block the swatch and then it will be time to take the gauge measurements to do all the math for the final size of the cowl. I'm super excited about this. So I made my way through the chart and I learned a lot along the way. Uh, the circles are where there was a symbol on the chart that there shouldn't have been one. Um, I got these backwards, so I had to switch them the other direction. And um, there was a special stitch that I needed here. I guessed the wrong stitch and it's very clear. Like the chart I started out with was a good starting point. And then as I followed it, I could see if it was actually looking like this or not as I worked it. So. Um, yeah, it was pretty easy to follow along and fix the things I got wrong in my chart. So I need to update my chart. But here, guys, I'm so in love with it. Here's what the swatch looks like. So this is the stitch pattern repeated three times because I needed to work it in the round, right? And then it is one full repeat of the 16 rows. And actually, I did one more row just to make sure that row one lined up with row 16 the way it was supposed to when you're ready to repeat your rows. Oh, one other thing I was going to mention. Oh, and I like, I, li I really like the fabric I'm getting with this three millimeter hook too. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention was I learned this. So following it through just on a swatch size, I learned that I want to actually shift the entire pattern repeat oh. over one. Because if you look here, there's not a lot going on on this end here. But this happened. It split a special stitch. So the special stitches go over two. Um, it's a very awkward start. So I'm going to shift everything to the right, which will bring this row over here and eliminate that issue at the beginning of the repeat. So 
I've got quite a bit of fixing to do on the chart, but I'm gonna do another row of single crochet in the back loop only, and then call this a day for this swatch and block it. Gonna let it soak for 20 minutes. Okay, so my swatch is now dry and I was able to measure it, and I decided to measure the size of the repeat, and it looks like my pattern repeat is 18 stitches wide and it came out to about three and a quarters inch. And then the height is 16 rows and that's 2.75 inches. So I, I picked a goal size. I'm looking for it to be about 25 inch circumference, 10 inch height. So to get my actual finished measurements, uh, the repeat width for eight repeats is 26 inches. So that's, that's close. And then for height, um, repeating the pattern four times gives me 11 inches, which is longer than I want. Um, plus the border, which is, it's just, I'm going to do the three single crochet rows, which is about a half inch times two for top and bottom. It's going to give me a 12 inch tall cowl. Now, this is also going to depend on how far my yarn will get me. It might only get me three repeats and then it's gonna be a little smaller, right? You're looking at under 10 inches, but it's still close. So I really could go either way on this one. I'm gonna shoot for four though. And so then to figure out my beginning chain, my stitch repeat is 18 stitches. I wanna do eight reps. So the beginning chain is 144. Just a note to remind myself to work four rounds of single crochet in the back loop only. Technically the first row is just a regular single crochet row and then three rounds in the back loop only. And then to start the chart. So that is what I'm getting ready to do. Well, you can hear Annie in here with me. She's taking a bath. So while she bathes, I'm gonna start the sample. One more quick note, I had to weigh the yarn. I forgot, you wanna weigh the yarn before you start so you know how much yarn you used um, with color work. You can't just weigh the whole thing and determine how much you used of each. So I weighed my dream in color or dream dream color and it was 91 grams because I used some of it for my swatch. But also you want to weigh your yarn even if you haven't worked with it at all because different yarns have different weights. So beginning weights. They're usually close to the ball band, but not always. So <laughs> Okay, Annie. So I just hit the halfway part on the cowl, the halfway point for what I assume I'll make. I was thinking I was going to do four repeats. This is two repeats. I went ahead and weighed the yarn at the halfway point. So the ball number one of black was 16 grams and then the dream color yarn was 59 grams, which means I've used less than half of the yarn. It means I have enough to do four repeats if I want to. So I've started the third repeat. After I finish that, I'm going to try the cowl on and see if I like the height. I love the way this is turning out. Oh, I came up with a name. So these diamonds come together to make stars right here, right? Well, there is an item in the Elder Scrolls online called a sky shard and you collect the sky shards and they form into a crystal and I thought that's just perfect so it's going to be called the sky so the sky shard mosaic cowl so yeah this is this is where we're at I just love the way this dream color is working up um, I've been working from the outside and it's winding down so I just finished the third repeat and I think this is tall enough I honestly think that one more repeat is gonna be too much I'll show you what it looks like on me so here it is already I mean that's plenty tall and you know once the border's on then I'll be able to like squish it down you can still see the pattern if it was any taller it would be squishing the pattern and what it still look cool but not as cool I think so I'm actually gonna stop at three and I'm gonna weigh the yarn I think I might have enough to make a hat because I haven't even touched my second ball yet. So that's exciting. <gasps> Bath time. I'm so excited to, to soak this and then block it and see how it ends up. You guys hear Max? Max wants to go outside. No, Max, you're not going outside. No, no. No, no, it's too cold. No. So here is the completed cowl. 
I've been working on it. I filmed a couple videos for it and I have publicly released that it's coming in March. And now I'm working, I figured out how to do the special stitches in Excel. You can go insert, where is it? Drawing. And then you can draw in here using this line tool. Check this out, right? Save and close. It throws it in your diagram and then you can shape it up. There's ways to uh, edit it as well. So I've got one that I plugged in here and I'm just gonna copy and paste it everywhere that I need it. But yeah, so I figured that out. So I'm gonna be adding the special stitches in. I've also been writing up the pattern. Ooh, look at that making sure it has written instructions as well as charted instructions. I use old patterns for templates, so I highlight the areas that need to be changed still. This is for my two ways to crochet it right, shawl, that's that diagram. But yeah, I just wanted to share that. This over here, I started playing around with the decrease chart, so that's what that is. So I woke up early this morning and decided to go ahead and size out the hat version. Um, and the green here, just a way that I marked the sizes that work, these other sizes don't really work because of the multiples. You can see here, finish measurements, where's my little scroll bar, oh, <laughs> actual finish measurements. The circumference is only able to hit certain sizes because of the multiples. So 13 is too small for a newborn. Uh, but the next size up is 16.25, which is way too big, so that size got dropped. Uh, this size was okay, um, way too small, so it got dropped, or way too big, so it got dropped, got kept here. J like, all of these sizes are really just consolidating into this one. Uh, because the only other difference between this size and these sizes is about an inch in circumference, but then also length. Um, which the length is all the same because of the stitch count. Well, except for, whoops, I do that. Except for here, it gets to be 10 inches long. Um. Time for another update on the cowl. My worsted weight yarn options came in the mail yesterday. So I've got Lollipop Melange and Amigo XL. And I just started my second repeat and I got all the information that I needed to get the worsted weight into my pattern. So it is scheduled to be tech edited tomorrow. We will be done. And here is the worsted weight cowl completely finished. This pattern, boy, what a journey, what a learning experience. And I'm so happy with the way that it's turned out. I hope you guys are enjoying the crochet along that's going on right now. And I will have to do a follow up on that hat that I shared. I did do the sizing and I, I'm working on the decrease chart. So that'll be coming down the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know down below if you did. And I will continue to vlog all of my designs like this if it's something that you guys are interested in. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye.